Stetson Kennedy's shocking expose, The Secret Doings of the Klan, sparked an outraged public reaction, prompting authorities to act upon and reform the civil rights system in the aftermath of World War II. World War II, a war against Adolf Hitler, was the biggest major conflict of the time. The U.S. entered the war on December 8, 1941. They sent more than half a million African Americans to serve in Europe, but unlike the whites, they fought in segregated units, and most of them held much lesser positions that placed them below the white soldiers and officers, like cleaning or serving them. In 1941, the government designed an experiment by setting up an all-black combat unit to see if African American soldiers could perform as well as white ones. They became the Tuskegee Airmen. But even so, when they returned from the war, they found that the freedom they were fighting for on behalf of others did not apply to themselves. They fought for the freedom of other religions and races, but weren't allowed freedom or equal rights at home. In fact, many returning black veterans were brutally murdered, courtesy of the KKK. World War II helped set the stage for the civil rights movement. It forced Americans to think about the hypocrisy of fighting for freedom and equal rights abroad, yet supporting discrimination at home. Kennedy provided the spark he needed to usher in the civil rights movement. While the Ku Klux Klan began as a benevolent prank club for bored Confederate soldiers after the Civil War, it eventually evolved into a complex and widespread organization that fed on hate and racial bias, committing immoral crimes against Negroes that went unchallenged by the majority of the public. Stetson Kennedy was one of the few that decided to take drastic action against those hate mongers. And so his great idea was to go undercover in the Ku Klux Klan. And so he moved to Atlanta, which was the headquarters of the Klan. Once I got in, it was obvious to me that I couldn't go to the police because at the very first meeting I could see the police uniforms, blue pants sticking out beneath the Klan robes and a great many uh, khaki uh, trousers of the sheriff's deputies. So I went to the FBI and sure enough, uh, at the next Klan meeting in Grand Dragon, Samuel Green got up and said, uh, had a little call from the FBI last week, said, uh, warning me that we've been infiltrated. So you can't ask for better cooperation than that. In order to fight the threats and intimidation from the KKK, Stetson Kennedy raised public awareness by going to the radio and providing radio broadcasters with secret Klan information. Pearson edited a weekly radio broadcast, coast to coast. So I made a deal with Pearson to broadcast the minutes of the Klan's last meeting. Every Sunday afternoon, we broadcast the names of judges and policemen and uh, businessmen, politicians, all sorts of people who had attended the last meeting of the Klan. So the minute we did that, they never showed up again. And the recruitment dropped. And best of all, the violence came to a stop. Kennedy also took his information to the script writers of Superman. Having had no popular villains for Superman to fight since World War II, they jumped on the idea. And thus, the new series, The Clan of the Fiery Cross, was created. Yeah, at the first Clan meeting he went to after the show hit the air, the Grand Dragon, who was the leader of the local group, he's trying to run the meeting, and then... One just regular rank-and-file Klansman um, gets up and starts shouting. He said, I came home from work the other night, and my kid and all these other kids had their, these towels tied around their necks like capes, and some of them had pillowcases over their heads, and the ones with the capes were chasing the ones with pillowcases. And when I asked them what they were doing, they said they were playing this new game of cops and robbers called Superman Against the Klan. I never felt so ridiculous in all my life. Suppose my own kid finds my Klan robe someday. While Superman doesn't actually exist, his influence on the real world extend far beyond the radio show and the comic books. In the Superman vs. the KKK affair, Stetson Kennedy became the fictional Superman, and Superman became the real-life Stetson Kennedy. The Clan of the Fiery Cross is definitely that radio show's finest hour, and Superman's. The Superman radio show was extremely effective in combating the KKK because the 1940s was the peak of the golden age of radio. Nearly every household had one. The radio was an extremely potent way of unifying the citizens across America. During World War II, it was used to raise support of American troops and provide the latest news. Children's programs like Superman flourished with a large, patriotic audience. 
Is it possible that you really believe all that stuff about getting rid of the foreigners? That one race, one religion, one color hokum? Hokum? Why, it's the absolute truth. We've got to save America from foreign elements. Well, I'll be... I thought you had brains, Riggs. But you become drunk on the slop we put up for the suckers. Suckers? Who are you calling? Our members, Riggs. The poor fish who want to hate and blame somebody else for their failures in life. The saps who believe drivel such as a man is a dangerous enemy because he goes to a different church. The little nobodies who want to believe some of the race is inferior so they can feel superior. The jerks who go for that 100% American rot. Rot? You mean you don't believe? Of course not. You must know there is no such thing as what we call 100% American. Eventually, Stetson revealed himself. Expelled from the clan, he toured around the country giving talks about his experiences and urging others to take action against this abomination. The public was ready to hear, and Stetson Kennedy delivered. The growing racial tensions from World War II finally snapped as Kennedy revealed the KKK for what it really was. And the momentum from the public's outrage finally turned the government's focus to what had been long ignored, civil rights. Although most of the general public greeted his news with shock and horror, Stetson Kennedy's information was not met with a good reception among high government officials. Grew, so did its political power. In the national arena, the Klan helped to elect 16 United States senators, five of whom were sworn Klan members. One of the five, Hugo Black, recanted his allegiance when he later became a Supreme Court Justice. From California to New Jersey, voters elected Klan-backed candidates to a variety of statewide and local offices. You couldn't run for public office in some places unless you had the Klan endorsement and Klan support because it had this enormous membership and it enjoyed the sympathy of non-members who may not have always condoned the most horrific and brutal acts, but who thought the Klan served a role in helping tamp down these dissident elements in society. Although efforts to completely destroy the KKK were stymied by corrupt government officials like Eugene Talmadge, Kennedy's attempt was not a failure. He managed to make the Klan cough up $685,000 in owed taxes by going through the Grand Dragon's wastebasket, encouraged more agencies to infiltrate different sections of the Klan by sending agents to go undercover, and gave the authorities an important tool in combating the KKK, Charter Revocation. Although future espionage missions were never as successful as Kennedy's original mission, they were a step in the right direction. It also raised public awareness of the Ku Klux Klan through various media outlets and court cases, which finally brought the FBI's focus back to what it had neglected for too long, civil rights cases. Stetson Kennedy's most decisive blows to the KKK were when he went through the Grand Dragon's wastebasket and reported information to the IRS resulting in the IRS collecting $685,000 in back taxes. Later, in 1947, he helped the Georgia government to revoke the Klan's national corporate charter. Through his actions, Stetson Kennedy broke up the national unity of the Klan and sparked the famous civil rights movement. While the popular belief was that it first started in the 1950s with Rosa Parks, it really began as a result of Stetson Kennedy's initiative. According to Stephen J. Dubner, author of Freakonomics, Kennedy was the greatest single contributor to the weakening of the Ku Klux Klan. Ultimately, he was the one that made the difference to the reactions he produced in the public, which urged the FBI and other government officers and organizations to finally take action against the KKK. I done spent my last three cents Mailing my letter to the president didn't make a show, I didn't make a dent So I'm swinging over to this independent chain Stetson Kennedy Christopher Reeve once said in an interview with Starlog magazine, A hero is somebody who will make sacrifices for others without expecting a reward. Stetson Kennedy can undoubtedly be considered a hero under that definition. He worked endlessly and with unmatched determination to end the KKK's reign of fear over the country. Mathers DuPont's got me in the hole They were profit for